You may have heard members of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints talk about the gold plates. So, what are the gold plates? What were they like? And why do we still talk about them? In 1820, a young boy named Joseph Smith prayed to know which church he should join. In response, Joseph was visited by God and Jesus Christ. God later called Joseph Smith to be his prophet on the earth. A few years after God and Jesus Christ visited Joseph Smith, an angel named Moroni also appeared to him. Moroni told Joseph about an ancient record buried in a hill near Joseph's house. The record, written on gold plates, contained the writings of prophets who lived in the Americas centuries earlier. The plates were similar to other ancient metal records that have been discovered by archaeologists in recent years. Four years after Moroni first told Joseph about the plates, Joseph retrieved them from the hill and translated them by the gift and power of God. It was the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. Several people, including members of Joseph Smith's family, as well as his friends, handled the gold plates. They described what they saw and felt. The plates measured eight inches in length and about six or seven inches wide. Altogether, the plates were around four to six inches thick, and they were pretty heavy. According to people who held the plates, they likely weighed somewhere between 40 and 60 pounds. The plates were bound together with three large D-shaped rings. The individual plates were as thin as parchment paper, and they were slightly flexible. A part of the plates was sealed together, so Joseph couldn't translate that part. Ancient prophets etched their records on similar plates in a language they called Reformed Egyptian. They recorded the history of their people and the teachings they received from God. The greatest event recorded in the Book of Mormon is the personal visit of the Lord Jesus Christ after his resurrection to the ancient people of the Americas. He established his church, healed the sick, and taught people his gospel. About 300 years after the visit of Jesus Christ to the Americas, a prophet named Mormon made the gold plates and condensed hundreds of years of prophet's writings onto its pages. That's why it's called the Book of Mormon, after the name of the prophet editor. He gave the gold plates to his son, Moroni. Yes, that Moroni. Who buried them in a hill to protect and preserve them. The plates lay hidden underground for over a thousand years until Moroni appeared to Joseph Smith and told him to retrieve them. On the title page of the Book of Mormon, the prophet Mormon wrote that the Book of Mormon was written to show the entire world that Jesus is the Christ, the eternal God, manifesting himself unto all nations. And after translating the Book of Mormon, Joseph Smith testified that the Book of Mormon was the most correct of any book on earth and the keystone of our religion, and a man would get nearer to God by abiding by its precepts than by any other book. Once the work of translation was finished, Moroni again appeared to Joseph and took back the gold plates. So why do we talk so much about the gold plates? The gold plates came to us by the power of God. Written on the plates was the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. Multiple witnesses saw and handled the gold plates. For the rest of their lives, they testified that the plates were real. The plates are tangible evidence linking the translated Book of Mormon to the ancient prophets who wrote it. And by reading the Book of Mormon, we can draw closer to Jesus Christ and learn more about his gospel. We talk about the gold plates because their story shows us how much God loves us and how he wants us to know his truth.